Peterson uh, then coming forward from a uh, from the early uh, annals of uh, history of America uh, about uh, the importance of uh, title to land uh, to the settlers, how important that was, and uh, and bringing us up to date now on how we have. Uh, how the mortgage industry has uh, sought to evade uh, recording fees for documents, assignments of mortgages, um, and have uh, put in place this uh, this concept of uh, uh, the uh, Mortgage Electronic Registration System Incorporated. Can you tell us Mr. Peterson, a little bit more about that entity. And cut that mic on, please. The, the, the company uh, operates a database. Uh, think of it as a big Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, and members of the system can enter information onto that database about the ownership of the loan or who holds the servicing rights of the loan. Uh, but the, 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 the tricky part that makes it legally problematic is that in order to justify not recording those assignments that as, the, as the promissory note gets transferred to various companies on towards securitization, they, they, the, the mortgages list MERS as the mortgagee on, on the loan. And the mortgagee, of course, is uh, historically is the same person as the lender, uh, and it's the one who owns the right to foreclose, owns the lien. Uh, uh, and it's very controversial, I think, from a legal perspective, whether or not MERS can be a mortgagee, uh, because they don't actually invest in the, in, the, in the asset. They don't make any loans. And now three state Supreme Courts, Maine, Arkansas, and Kansas, have uh, all held that uh, in various contexts, MERS actually is not a mortgagee. And it creates a real inconsistency with the position of uh, uh, the securitizing banks and the trustees that, uh, that manage the pools of, of loans because they also claim to own the mortgage. They need to do that because otherwise their investors will be upset. Um, as Mr. Deutsch pointed well, out. That, well, well, but, let me stop you yeah, here. Please, I apologize. The, um, the who owns or who are the participants in, uh, in MERS? Who are the owners of MERS? And does MERS have the ability to cut through the rigmarole that the attorneys, uh, uh, Mr. Kowalski, Mr. Cox, and Ms. Fluker, have to deal with in terms of establishing a chain of title, if you will? Does MERS have the ability to uh, be of assistance uh, in in terms of running that title down? Um, and I'd like to hear from uh, each of the witnesses about that. Well, it, it's a great question. MERS is owned by uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and also uh, all the big banks, Bank of America, Citi, etc. Uh, that's who owns it. Uh, can MERS cut through the rigmarole? Uh, uh, my answer is no. MERS actually exacerbates the rigmarole. Why? Because MERS is just a shell company. They don't have very many employees. So they have what are called, they have tw about 20,000 so-called vice presidents. Uh, and they get these vice presidents become vice presidents by uh, getting a boilerplate corporate resolution. I'm using air quotes for the record. Corporate resolution. I'm, I'm not sure that it really is that, but but they but it, they get this corporate resolution off the internet. And these are really customer service representatives, paralegals, uh, uh, workers for servicers that pretend to be vice presidents of MERS. And they're the same people in many cases that were the so-called robo signers. So. Vice presidents of MERS are pretending to be, uh, or employees are pretending to be vice presidents of MERS when they go about doing this robo signing nonsense. Uh, uh, so I, I don't think that MERS has helped clear up the system at all. It makes it more difficult for homeowners to understand what's going on, and it creates confusion and I think even deception in the system. All right, thank you, Mr. Kowalski. If you look to and I understand you wouldn't have it in front of you, but if you look to Exhibit 6 that I filed with the committee, you will see a MERS assignment. It is an assignment that purports to have been signed uh, on behalf of First Horizon Home Loan. It is actually signed by an office manager of the law firm that is foreclosing in this case. And when I finally received, for example, 
the purported power of attorney that allowed the office manager to sign hundreds of these without knowing whether any true transfers took place at all because it's not part of her law firm office manager job description. I received a power of attorney that's also the next document in your Exhibit 6 that plainly makes clear that she doesn't even have authority to have signed the affidavit that she knows nothing about. So in, in short answer to your question of whether MERS helps make the process more transparent and solves issues for the courts in particular, the answer is clearly no. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Representative Johnson, uh, MERS has proven to be a significant problem for us in Maine. MERS claims that it has the right to foreclose mortgages in its own name. MERS has admitted that it does not own any loan. It never has owned a loan. MERS has no right to collect payments on any loan. It admits that, but yet it claims that it has the right to foreclose mortgages. In Maine this summer, we went to the Maine Supreme Court, and we obtained a decision in the case of MERS versus Saunders, which explicitly held that MERS does not have the right to conduct foreclosures. MERS seeks to get around that problem by a subterfuge. Jeffrey Steffen is a MERS vice president, in addition to being an employee of MERS. What MERS has tells us, people like Mr. Steffen, is that when MERS wants to foreclose in its own name, Mr. Steffen should get out his MERS hat for a moment and put it on and call himself a MERS vice president. And in that moment, he should take possession of the promissory note that belongs to GMAC, perhaps, and hold it in his hand. And at that moment, MERS owns it, they claim. And because of that, MERS claims that from there on out, it can go forward and foreclose. This is a subterfuge on homeowners and lawyers all over the country who don't even know who owns their mortgage and who they should deal with in trying to handle foreclosures and negotiate mod modifications. Thank you, and I'll be vacating this seat perhaps d uh, during uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dush's, excuse me, Ms. Ms. Fluker's uh, response to the question. And I'd also ask you to respond as well, Mr. Douche. And the reason why I'll vacate the chair is because the chairman is uh, back. Thank you. MERS is a problem in Michigan as well. Uh, as stated earlier, Michigan is a foreclosure by advertisement state. That means it's done statutorily. In Michigan, in order to have a valid foreclosure on a property, you're supposed to be able to show that you have an ownership interest in the indebtedness. MERS cannot have an ownership interest in the indebtedness because if you look at MERS's title on every mortgage, MERS is solely the nominee for the mortgagee. However, because of the changing of hats, so to speak, of the affidavits that are submitted, it has become a split issue in Michigan. Uh, there are cases up on appeal right now. There are judges who say, hey, this doesn't make sense. There is no ownership interest. There are others that have said, well, because of the contractual relationship of the mortgage document, that they could have some standing. The bottom line is MERS is merely, as Mr. Peterson said, a shell corporation. If you look at their website, they strictly hold themselves out to be a recording agency. Uh, case law from Nebraska and Kansas has indicated that they do not do any servicing on the loan, meaning they don't accept payments, they don't hold the mortgage, therefore it almost seems kind of commonsensical that they don't have an ownership interest in the loan, yet they continue to foreclose independently without stating the actual lender or servicer, which has obviously exacerbated and complicated the foreclosure matter even uh, worse than it already was. Thank you.